And uh, if the spirit moves, share. Do that. And if you wish to pay for your own call, the area code 501-787-6026. If you have a prayer request, look up to him. That is to say, reach up to him. Reach out to him. He loves you, dear one. He wants to touch you, to warm your heart, to give you good advice that will help you prosper, to help you be a man or a woman of God where you can stand up and be somebody, for you are somebody when you're a child of a living God. He owns everything. Heavenly Father, we ask that you look down, lead, guide, touch, heal in Jesus' uh, precious name. Thank you, Yahweh. Okay, we're going to get right into our questions here. John from Delaware. How do you feel about evangelists who use healings to glorify themselves? Well, not very much. And I want you to think what you have said here. Anyone that claims God's gifts glorifies the man or the woman doesn't really have a gift. Healings are not done to glorify man, but the Heavenly Father. Dorothy from, why? He's the one that does it. Man can't heal. Well, he has the gift of healing. Doesn't matter. It's still not the man that has the gift that does the healing. It's Almighty God. We men are so unimportant in connection with the all-powerful word of the living God. Dorothy from California. Do the Kenites know who they are? Most of them don't. They may have a pretty good idea, but most do not. The hierarchy, they know who they are. I remember an old minister that I studied with uh, one time mentioned that there was a small funeral in a small town, and this man told his son, and his son repeated, he said, son, we have to stop outside this cemetery. We can't go past here. We're sons of Cain. Can we study to find out who the Kenites are today? No. Oh discernment and studying test their fruits Jesus made it very clear um, is it a race absolutely they're the offspring of Cain they're his children are they around today yep uh, are there that many of them no there are really not that many of them uh, I know some say well I think I married one well just because somebody is ornery and just a regular devil part of the time that, that you know all people can be that way a little bit. A Kenite is a Kenite indeed. How can we find out who the four hidden dynasties are? Get the first two tapes or get the minor prophets and listen to my teaching on the first chapter of Zechariah. But the four hidden dynasties that are used to control the world are very simple. They're political, educational, religious, and the economy. The economy always seems to be the most successful in getting people's attention. Um, Marie from California, what does come sick of mean? All right, that's, that's a colloquial term I use. And, and sick of is usually in reference to a man's dog. And there are dogs that you, uh, the cattle dogs, sheep dogs, coon dogs, uh, bird dogs, Dogs have a purpose and a gift just like people do. And they're trained and raised to sick, that is to say to chase or to capture or to care for these various uh, deals. When I say they don't know from come sick them, they're just like one of these old dogs that the only thing he'll sick is a biscuit, all right? Good for nothing, and, and all he'll sick is a biscuit. He'll, he will really go after a biscuit though. But other than that, he won't sick anything, all right? So from come sick of means most people are so confused, they don't know whether they're a bird dog, sheep dog, a biscuit dog, or what. They just don't know from come sick of All right, Robert from California. Where in the Bible does it speak of our physical bodies being changed to spiritual bodies? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul makes it very clear, and he gets you in the 50, what, the 50... Second verse, he tells you exactly when it'll happen. 51st or 52nd. You'll find it. Bill from California. Do you know where Mary, Jesus' mother, was born? Yeah, I do. She was born in the house of Heli. Bob from California. Why is it necessary that Jesus know that I believe in him? 
his death was the price of salvation, why does it require my belief in that fact? Well, it really does. It really doesn't require it for you at all if you don't want it. But if, you know, the most, uh, Bob, probably the most quoted verse in the Bible. I mean, even in a lot of football games, baseball games, you'll see John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You understand? God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should what? I'll bet you even know, Bob, that whosoever should believe upon him should not perish. What makes the big difference? If you don't believe, you're going to perish, son. Adios. Uh, Lydia from California. I give money to children that need food and clothing. Should I consider this tithes? Boy, Lydia, you're talking to the old soft heart here, and hon, I'd, I'd like to say, yes, that's true, but it isn't. Tithe belongs to her father and love offerings. I want you to read the book of Malachi. It's love offerings that we give to these children of clothing and so forth. But God's tithe goes to teach the lost. For it is one thing to clothe the naked body, But not much happens if that naked body dies because the spiritual food is not fed. So it is important that God's tithes go into the storehouse of the Heavenly Father. Where is that? It's wherever you're taught, wherever your food, your word doesn't come from man. It comes from God. And it helps that grow so that after they're fed and after they're clothed, they can be morally sound and have eternal life, okay? Like I said, I'm an old softy boy. I, 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 but if we, were to, if we were to turn all of God's house and focus it upon that, then who would teach the word if your gift happened to be teaching or supporting a teaching ministry? Let your love offerings take care of the hungry, but never take from God. Karen from... Kevin, rather, from Pennsylvania. What is your opinion of public schools versus Christian schools? Well, Kevin, there are good public schools and there are bad public schools. There are good Christian schools and there are bad Christian schools. So you see, you have to judge each one on its own merit. I might tell you that all Christian schools were good and there may be some uh, pervert that's... Um, um, uh, exploiting many of the children there. Just because it carries a title doesn't mean it's what it's advertised to be. Okay? I would say <clears throat> one other thing. If you have a good public school in your area, remember this. I want you to always remember John 17. Jesus said in the final prayer to Father, my work is finished and so forth, but he said, I, Father, I am not of this world, neither are they of this world, meaning his elect, but they are in the world, and we're here for a purpose. I recommend sending children to a Christian school. That's fine. But I sent my children always to a public school. Of course, we have good public schools here. We even have Bible reading in our schools in free time and with the permission of parents. But your children must live in this world. If you, if you immune them from the world itself, that is to say other people, school and so forth, without teaching them or making them aware of the ways of the world, you will have them so protected from, quote, disease that when they finally come to age and you can no longer control them and have to turn them loose, they will be poisoned because they have no immune system built up. That means knowledge to the way of the world. Don't shelter your children too much. Always teach them well what Satan's duties are, not duties, but his uh, little tricks and how to survive in this world. All right, you got it? Uh, but uh, a person must choose 
in an individual case each time. Evelyn from Chicago. Is the old law in the Old Testament, is this the law we don't keep? Just the Ten Commandments, such as Leviticus 19.20? Leviticus 19.20. Well, in the case even in 1920, Jesus, since this time, has died on the cross. You use the law. The, first of all, the statutes and many of the ordinances are done away with, nailed to the cross. Christ became those things or done away with them, such as there is no more blood sacrifice. That would be mockery against Jesus, blasphemy, as a matter of fact. But there are many health laws in our Father's Word. And if you don't follow them, you're going to be sick. I mean, you can count on it. You can guarantee it. Would I love Jesus and he set me free from this? No, he didn't. He gave you common sense. And he gave you a lot of advice on how to stay healthy. And if you won't listen to it, why should Jesus help you? He won't. So you see, there is a great danger. But yet at the same time, his love is so abundant and so free that when you realize you have sinned and fallen short, then you can repent. And such as Leviticus 19.20, you got a clean start. I don't care who you are or who you've been associated with. You have a new start in life. You are forgiven, and he doesn't even want to hear about it. That's why repentance is the fulfillment and the gift of um, unmerited favor, which is to say grace. Grace is not worth a dime to the person that will not repent. You hear me say that again? Grace is not worth a dime to a person who will not repent or is unrepentant. What is grace? Unmerited favor. You don't merit anything and you won't get anything. Unless you repent when you sin. And what is sin? It's transgressing. Good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Praise God. We're ready to get back into his word. We thank him for this platform and the fact that we can gather with you at the end of each day to study his word, to strengthen us, to give us a little recuperation from this world, this world age. And let us look even into the future of what will be, what has been, what is now. And how we are to conduct ourselves to have the victory and be prosperous and blessed and healthy through all those things. Our Father's counsel is absolutely wonderful and we thank him for it in Yahshua Messiah Jesus' precious name. Amen. Psalms 130, a Psalms of Trust. To teach you to trust. There are 15 of these Psalms that, have, that are called Psalms of the Degrees. Degrees like of the sun. 15... Ten written by Hezekiah, four by David, and one by Solomon. Also, 15 years it was that Hezekiah's life was extended by our father. Ten degrees it was, the number that he wrote of these degree psalms, that the sun actually moved ten degrees in the heavens. What does that say to you? God's in control. If he wants to move the sun ten degrees, he will. It lets us know in this final generation that he could extend the day even to the point of giving us the victory, for we are children of the day, not children of the night. All Father, around the globe we come, we ask that you lead, guide, direct, touch, heal in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. Okay, let's get into some questions. We got D from Texas. Uh, would you please explain persecution to me, and do you see this coming? in the real near future. I am a struggling new Christian. Well, hey, you're, you keep struggling, but let God do it for you, and then you won't struggle, all right? You'll slip a little occasionally, but he'll, he'll do that. If you put his yoke on and trust it, that's the important thing, it makes that load so easy to carry. Persecution, I like to think of as tribulation, because that's what the persecution of the end times will actually be will be that tribulation, which is temptation. Christ warned you to not be tempted, and he gave us an example of how to resist Satan in Matthew chapter 4. 
Satan utilizes scripture especially to persecute. Christ will persecute a new Christian while they're still weak. Weak in the sense that they perhaps are not familiar with scripture like Luke chapter 10 verse 18 where Christ beheld Satan as a star fall from heaven and Lucifer is one of his names, bright star. And he gave us power over all of our enemies. And when you accept that, absorb it, and practice it, you don't even think about persecution. Persecution is just a little exercise. Exercise of control, uh, being in charge, because we are, and uh, grow to that. Grow to that, D. Proud of you. Okay, Kirby from Arizona. What is the correct way to ask Jesus to live in your life? Well, hey, there, there is, just talk to him. Uh, you know, we have this correctness, political correctness. Oh my, how, how wonderful that sounds. You know what I mean? Politi to be politically correct. Well, uh, th that can be, you can drum up more excuses for breaking God's law under political correctness. I am so very thankful that, that um, even in this great nation, as we had this terrible tragedy in Atlanta, that our president has moved to force television to do at least three hours of children's programming and to teach them about crime, uh, against crime, just good wholesome stuff. And one reason I so agree with that, I think it's probably one of the best things our president has ever done. It's good to teach children to get crooks out of politics. Best thing in the world, and I hope it starts right here in Arkansas be the best thing in the world. I'm so proud that I heard that today. But just ask the Father plainly and simply, come into my life and then get into his word and work at it, okay? Uh, Marilyn from Texas. On the Mark of the Beast tape, who are you talking about when you say Ginsburg? Well, Ginsburg was the editor, I will say, of the Masara. The Masara is a work that consists of the original footnotes of the manuscripts. You won't find them in the King James because they were dropped. They were not brought forward in the translation. Ginsburg, uh, being one of the only people that acquired or came, came into his hand, was it of God? I probably think it was. A Masara from China and another from Europe, we will say. And they were exactly alike. There are a lot of fake Masaras. Masara means to pass a thought from my mind to yours without changing God's word. Uh, Ginsburg was the editor of that. He did a fantastic job, all right? And um, enough said. Uh, Carlton from Virginia. Which came first, the Torah or the Dead Sea Scrolls? How do you answer the critics that claim the Old Testament was written in Christ's time? Any information on the subject? Lots of it. How could, it have, how could the Torah have been written in Christ's time when he quoted Psalms 22 hanging on the cross? How could, um, now, the, now to be very specific as a student of God's word, I would have to say that Christ did live even before the Torah was written because he was the spirit, the Ruach, uh, that was with God that moved upon the very creation itself. But I have to take it that they're saying he was the instigator of all the word. That is that is so easy to contradict. Um, uh, history itself will do that, all right? History itself as to um, back to the church, uh, 400 B.C. Uh, we'll document that when Nehemiah and Ezra were assigned the gathering back together in the great synagogue of the manuscripts. 
Uh, Maddie from Florida, how do you feel about people taking medication? Shouldn't we just trust in the Lord? No, God gave us a mind. There are many Christian doctors, MD. Luke himself, the writer of the gospel, was a medical doctor. You have to use common sense, do prayer, and go from there. The main reason we get sick is we don't pay any attention to God's health laws. And um, they'll keep you well better than anything. Uh, or, you know, but uh, sometimes we slip, and because of the pollution in the world, there's poison out there. If your kidneys were to quit today, you'd be dead in three days because of the poison you eat and all your regular food stuff that's supposed to be pasteurized, homicized, refried, and, so, and socialized, all right? I mean, just goes through all kinds of stuff. Sealed, resealed, but it's still poison, okay? And God created these bodies where they kind of throw it off, but um, there you are. You use both and do it wisely. Irvin from, Irvin from Illinois. Will the church be gone before the Antichrist is cast on this earth? I bet you haven't been studying with me long, have you, Irvin? Uh, I, have you never had the Mark of the Beast tape? That's free. Um, I was, no, you must have. I was taking tapes one and two of Peter, and I noticed saying in Peter chapter three that the millennium will come before the Antichrist. No, it won't. I'm sorry, you got, you're gonna have to go back and listen to him again. The millennium is well after Antichrist. The millennium begins the first day Christ sets foot back on this earth. Okay, Addie from Montana. My name is Addie and I'm 14 years old. I think you're a wonderful teacher and I think you are, for 14, you're one of the better judges of character that I've seen lately. Uh, darling, I'm teasing, all right? Uh, thank you for that. Enjoy studying with you. I have a question. Where in, why in the millennium on, only the elect will get to see Jesus? Thank you for your time you put on the air. It helps everyone immensely. Well, thank you, darling. I appreciate that. And you live in a wonderful state up there. Um, now, it isn't that um, they will see him but physically they cannot go to him as it is written. Probably Ezekiel chapter 44 gives the explanation, best explanation. And you might ask, well, why? They're not clean. They didn't overcome. And spiritually they are dead. And we are not to touch anything dead spiritually. Those that do, as it is written, and it's the place that we know we can recognize our brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, is Ezekiel 44, whereby it states that one of God's elect, that's what the word Zadok in the Hebrew means, um, can go to them and kind of get them, get, uh, spiritually kick them around a little bit and shape them up, discipline them, tell them to get their act together, okay? Um, that happens in the millennium. Charlie from Florida. I know some people who are good Christians, but once in a while they drink too much and do some things that are wrong. Is this spirit or is it just a weakness of the flesh? Thanks for the teaching. Kind of both. There's spirits in the bottle. Sir Walter Raleigh made a, I think it was him, and I, I'm out of my field here, but I'll say it anyway, stated, it is only a gentleman's right to drink. And naturally, in a sense, that's a true statement if one is going to drink. Because once you take on too many of those spirits, you cease being a gentleman and become a drunk. And nobody, nobody likes to be around a drunk. They're dangerous and obnoxious and the spirits in the bottle take over their spirit and yeah, of course it's wrong. Uh, Crystal from Florida. Please document after the judgment when some people will be thrown in the lake of fire, will they be consumed and then and turn to ashes or is this eternal torture? Well, when you turn something to ashes, that is eternal. That's what the meaning, it's a Hebrew, it's a Hebraism that means, and you can read of it uh, as Satan's uh, promise, God's promise to Satan. Ezekiel 28, verses 18 and 19, that he's turned to ashes from within. Now that's an interesting saying, 
right? How, how can someone turn to ashes from within? That would almost take something that was micro, all right? But be that as it may. Um, uh, an interesting way to turn something to ashes, and you might better understand the consuming fire. But it's a saying that means fini forever and ever and ever. Lorraine from California. Which part of the dead body goes to the mansions, and does the memory go with it? Well, naturally, Ezekiel cha um, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 will let you know that the dead flesh, once the mind leaves it, which is to say your spirit, intellect, it don't know nothing, nobody remembers it, it's gone, it turns back to dirt. It is your spirit, the intellect of your soul and your soul that enters the spirit body and returns to the Father. And don't, when, on this word mansions, I choose not to go into that, but don't miss the 14th chapter and you'll learn a lot about what those mansions are, okay? Uh, you can kind of enjoy one of those today. And, and I'll explain at that time. Dora from California. Is it wrong to ask God to help you not to be deceived by the Antichrist, or does he expect you to do it on your own? His, his word's not going to let you be deceived, okay? His spirit will be stronger within us at that time, even to the point, as it is written in Mark 13, that you're not to even premeditate what you say, because that tongue on Pentecost Day, he will speak through you, all right? You don't have to worry, Dora. You keep studying his word, and that puts a wall around you that you never have to be afraid. Uh, Jason from the West Indies. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? And um, I'm glad you look forward to the programs, and uh, I'm glad you're sending a photograph, uh, Jason. Great. Be good to get it. Okay, where, where's the Ark of the Covenant? Read the last two verses in Revelation chapter 11. And it will tell you the Ark of the Covenant. And um, I'm sure you will understand if you meditate on it a little bit why the Father would have it with him. Man sure didn't take too good a care of it. Okay, Willie May from Georgia. Where in the Bible is this scripture? Forgetting the things behind me, forgetting the things behind me, I press toward the high calling of um, God. Philippians chapter 3, try along about verse 13 and 14, all right? I believe that's the, what the scripture you're looking for. Not quite worded exactly that way, but I think it'll work for you. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Fernando from California. If I've been playing on several things, praying on several things I need and nothing happens, what should I do? Does this mean that my timing is different than God's? It sure does or you would already have it. I don't know, you have to analyze yourself. What have you done for God lately that you're asking him to do something for you? Th this thing kind of goes both ways, you know. God says in one place where he's teaching us not to worry, after you do the things he instructs you to do, then he blesses you. A lot of times that's what the reason is, okay? Uh, Rimanda from Georgia, what a pretty name. Ramanda, please explain to me what the three world ages are. It's the first earth age when we had the old dinosaurs tromping around. That's evidence is out there for. I mean, it's there. That's when Satan rebelled, the present age we're in, and then the eternity. Uh, there, I have a tape titled that. It's an hour and a half teaching. It might help you. That's a, this is a strange line. Analyza. Are you pulling my leg a little bit, or is that really your name? Analyza. You know, a linguist kind of does, his mind does strange things with languages. What are you analyzing, all right? I, I'm, I, what I'm saying is I'm a little bit suspicious of your name itself, and probably I may have to eat crow and apologize. Let's see the question. If God knows everything, why did he choose Lucifer as one of the closest angels though he would be betrayed. This puzzles me. Well, you need to analyze of that just a little more. And uh, I'll tell you why. Because love, have you ever loved anybody? Did you earn it? Did you buy it? Did you pay for it? What happens when you have to go somewhere and pay for love? 
all right? Well, you can't buy true love. You can't pay for it. You can't force it. It comes from within. God gave him free soul as he did all the rest of us to do. Hey, it's your choice, whatever you choose. Satan chose to fall away from him because he was so good, all right? And uh, God does not know whether we will choose him or...